For newly diagnosed cancer patients, current care at most major medical centers now involves some level of personalized medicine. That is, molecular characterization of a patient's tumor helps direct patients to appropriate therapies, mostly involving small molecule inhibitors of kinases. For patients with cancers that do respond well to targeted therapies, there are emerging problems. While patient outcomes are vastly improved by these targeted therapies, clinical trials have suggested what preclinical data has insisted. Rational combinations of targeted therapies will be needed if curative intentions remain in solid tumors. In other words, while single-agent targeted therapies have been successful at inducing initial responses, responses are often mild and or transient, with the tumor growing back rapidly, usually within one year. In addition, there remain many cancers which do not have good targeted therapy options because they are driven by non-kinase mutations. On the climb up the therapeutic tree, kinase inhibitors, represented by the low-hanging fruit, are the dominant type of targeted therapy on the market. However, cancers driven by non-kinases, at least ostensibly, like transcription factor-driven cancers and cancers driven by tumor suppressor loss and aberrations in the epigenome, require other therapeutic options. It should be noted that a disproportional amount of these cancers are in the pediatric population. For these, other therapies have begun to emerge. For example, BH3 mimetics targeting the apoptotic machinery, like the BCL2 inhibitor venetoclax produced by AbbVie, and MCL1 inhibitors developed by Amgen and Servier, as well as epigenetic targeted therapies. In addition to serving as new targeted therapies for these cancers, these drugs can also be combined with kinase inhibitors in kinase-driven cancers to improve initial responses, delay resistance, and improve patient outcomes.